In this video I'm going to be showing you how to add a red dot laser pointer onto your K40 laser cutter. If you've used one of these stock laser cutters before, then you'll know that positioning the laser for a cut is a bit of a guessing game. So I'll show you how to add a small laser pointer to the cutting head in order to indicate exactly where the laser is aiming. I started out by measuring the head of the laser cutter in order to design a 3D printed bracket to hold the pointer. I wanted the pointer to be adjustable so that you can make changes for different thickness materials and different focal points of different lenses. I came up with this design. At the same time I designed a bracket in the duct to support a small radial fan to try out a fan air assist and see how well that works. I've included print files for the model with and without the fan bracket. Have a look at my other video for the fan assist modification. I printed out the bracket using black PLA with a 50% infill. There are three included models, one for the pointer only, one for the fan assist only, and then one for the pointer and fan assist, so you can print the one you need. For the pointer, I ordered one of these focusable 5mW 5V laser pointers. They're low power and have an adjustable focus ring on the end to accurately focus the pointer. Push the laser pointer into the laser holder, it should be a snug fit. Now screw the laser holder onto the main bracket using an M3x15 hex head screw. This screw allows you to adjust the angle of the pointer in order to line it up with the laser at different heights and different focal points. Slide the bracket onto the bottom of your head of your laser and then secure it with another M3x15 hex head screw. Now that the pointer is in place, we need to add the power connection and a push button to turn it on. I'm going to be doing this next step in conjunction with the fan assist addition, but the method is going to be exactly the same. You'll need to add a drag chain to support the power cables to the head of the laser, so that they don't get caught up when the laser is moving. The one end of the drag chain gets connected to the head of the laser and the other end to the side wall of the machine. First we'll need to add an anchor screw onto the head of the laser. I took the head off for this step as it's easier to work with. I drilled a 4mm hole on one side of the head and added an M4 screw which was long enough to fit through the drag chain and then replaced the head. Place the end of the drag chain onto the laser cutter head and then measure out the length of drag chain you need. You want it to be long enough to reach all four corners of your bed, but not too long that it gets in the way. Remove the spare links so that it's the correct length and then add the end support. Mark off the two holes for the end support so that you can drill the required holes through the wall of the machine. I used a 4mm drill bit to drill two holes for some M4 by 15mm screws, which are then secured through the side wall. You might also want to add a thin screw or rod onto the head to stop the drag chain from being able to move into the path of the laser. This will interrupt the laser's path causing your cut to fail and potentially damage the drag chain or cause it to catch on fire. Next I added some push buttons to the control panel. 
I added four buttons, one for the pointer and one for the fan assist. I also included another two which I plan on using for a future height adjustable print bed. I wasn't too worried about keeping them neat as I'm planning on replacing the front panel as the LCD display is not very useful and the more basic ammeter panel is actually better. You'll then need to get to work on the wiring. You need three wires for the head, one for the 24 volts for the fan, one for 5 volts for the pointer and one for common ground. If you're not using the fan or not using the pointer then you'll only need two wires. Feed the wires through the side of your machine and into the electronics compartment. I ran them in the existing cable bundle so that the wiring is kept neat. I ran the wires up to the push buttons and then down to the power supply for power. You'll need to hook your wires up to these three terminals on the power supply, depending on what you're supplying. Keep in mind that this power supply is not really designed with much extra capacity, so don't add anything which will draw a lot of power, or you might burn it out. Now that all the wiring is done, let's turn it on and try it out. Put a piece of wood, cardboard or acrylic into the cutting area. Make sure that the piece is at the correct focal point for your lens. Most stock K40s come with a 50.8mm focal point lens. Now turn the points on and adjust the focus ring until a small focus dot is made. Briefly turn your laser on using a low power setting in order to make a mark to adjust the pointer onto. Now tilt the pointer so that it's pointing to the mark and then secure it. Check the laser again and your pointer should be ready to use. Now you have an easy way to see exactly where your laser is going to cut, allowing you to position it accurately and avoid wasting material or overrunning the edges. Let me know in the comments section if you've built a laser pointer onto your laser cutter. What other additions have you made to your K40? Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.